Hey, hey, and thanks for clicking on Hey, Hey, Melissa Crochets. I appreciate it. I want to do a market recap. Um, if you watch my channel, you knew I had a big one coming up. And they were, it was Friday evening and Saturday. And today is Sunday, so it's the day after. I did try to film this segment at 5.30 this morning because I was up because I fell asleep early because it was so exhausting. But my brain was like, Ugh. Um <laughs> So it didn't go well and so instead of editing that video every 20 seconds i'm just gonna refilm it um and this time i actually took notes about like what i want to talk about and blah 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 so let's get to it <laughs> so the event was from four till nine on friday um and during that evening i sold seven cardigans and one 13 square 13 granny square market bag type thing so you know the 13 square bags um, I'll put a picture of it here. Um, it was nice. I just, I had listed it online. I had no bites at all. Nobody clicked on the listing on Facebook Marketplace. So I took it with me, hoping somebody would be like, ooh, what's that? And somebody did. So I sold it for, I think, $25. Um, so that was great. And then I was a little concerned about, like, not the attendance or anything on Friday evening. But Friday evening, it was all seniors through. Like, I don't think I seen, like, anybody under the age of... 50. Well, I guess I've seen one of my girlfriends, but she's, she's not under the age of, or sorry, she's not over the age of 50. Um, so yeah, so it was a very different demographic. I mean, I still sold some. So a lot of the vendors were like, oh no, is this how it's going to be this weekend? Um, but luckily it wasn't. Friday, or Saturday was hopping. So we'll get to that. Um, okay. And then Saturday yesterday it was nine to five. So, um, it wasn't so bad because you could just kind of roll in in the morning and like start selling. I wanted to get there a little bit early so I could just kind of poke around and see other people's stuff and do some Christmas shopping. So that was good. I think I got there around 8.30. I did buy one necklace for my friend. Um, she's really getting into uh, crystals and amethyst and I don't know, whatever the other ones are. So I found a pretty necklace for her. So she'll she'll like that for Christmas. I didn't need to get her anything else because <laughs> I've got her a few things and, you know, she was crossed off my list. But I seen it and I knew she would like it. So that's the way it goes. I figured that everyone would be wearing Santa hats or something festive, but there's only one other Santa hat person. So, oh well, I went to the dollar store and I had got these. They're so cute. They're just like tinsel pom-poms on a headband <laughs> and they're so cute. So I'll probably wear these at work during the holidays or something. So, yay. Super cute. I like them. They held up really well. They had other colors, but the green were cute. And I had designated outfits for each day. So Friday night I was wearing this. And then Saturday I wore this one. The cardigan I'm wearing here on the Saturday, I do plan to keep for myself if it doesn't sell at these next two markets. Okay. I have. So it started at 9 on Saturday and went till 5 p.m. I was about to burst my bladder at 11.30 a.m. because it was so crazy, crazy busy. And it was kind of annoying because like it was a really big haul. So it was the type of, it was at the Stratford, Ontario Rec Center, Perth Rec Center, I don't know, Rec Complex, I think is what it's called. The Recreational Complex. So I know at the end of that Rec Complex, they have like a farmer's market area and upstairs is like their bingo hall. And then they have like a whole bunch of ice rinks. Um, and then they have like this big banquet hall and they opened up the entire banquet hall for this um, craft vendor sale thing. So they always have like those big partitions in the middle of the room. Um, they'd opened up all of them and I was counting the, you know, like the ceiling spaces. So they opened up all five rooms uh, or five, maybe it was four, but whatever, I don't care. Um, and this place was freaking massive. Like I've been there for other events and like I volunteered for this um, event before, like at like, you know, the admission table or like the donation table or, you know, the fundraising table. Um, I know three of the girls um, out of the five that do the collective Thing and run this event so I usually volunteer for them but I had enough cardigans this year to be a vendor so that was awesome um, but it was so crazy so big and then I was at the back corner so basically if you're picturing like a rectangle bathrooms were here I was all the way over here so that was really difficult and I was like I'm gonna burst like I'm gonna need a bucket and I'm gonna pee behind my cardigans <laughs> just because it was it was crazy busy and they had volunteers walking around, but the volunteers, and I put this on a little survey that they handed out as well, like at the end of the event, I had said, 
we need more volunteers to walk around the back corner because like it was so crowded. I don't think the volunteers would be able to get through, right? So they couldn't relieve us for like potty breaks or for, well, anything like uh, get some food or whatever. So at that point I was like, I just have to leave my booth, take my purse and stuff with me and find the bathroom. Um, I did see another vendor go into like the back hallway. Like there was doors, like exits, of course. And like there was like a serving kitchen back there that the caterer was using to, you know, uh, do his meals and stuff. So I was like, it has to be a bathroom back there. So I mean, there's a bathroom back there and I was so excited <laughs> because to get through that crowd was nuts. It was almost shoulder to shoulder all day. I think it didn't calm down until about 3.30 and it went until 5. And then at 5, they had to start kicking people out. You know, they used their overhead speaker system to say, hey, we're closed now. Vendors, you're allowed to close down. Shoppers, please leave. Um, so it was crazy all day. Um, last like hour and a half was like steady, but not like shoulder to shoulder like it was. Um, so, I mean, it was a great event, but it was, it was tough to get to the bathroom. I do wish I had a helper, but the volunteers were successful in helping when they were able to get to us. Um, so yay, um, yay for busyness, <laughs> but I didn't pee my pants. So that was good. <laughs> but some things that I noticed, I was, you know, kind of keeping track in my head, um, and like, you know, learning things about people and like sales of cardigans and stuff. Um, everybody wanted a plus size one, even if they were a size zero or a size four to six, they still wanted a plus size cardigan because they wanted the oversized comfiness of it, which is cool, which is fine. But every single person was like, oh, I really like that oversized cozy comfy look or like, oh, this feels great. And like, I was like, oh, if the plus size ladies come by, I'm not going to have anything left. But at least my sign said I had plus size and standard size. So I didn't want them to think I didn't have plus size because I'm plus size. So I hate when people don't. So I didn't sell out of plus size in the end. I think I had about six left um, out of probably like 25 that I took of plus size. So what can you do? But something else that was really, really cute, and I'll put a picture here. Um, there was a really cute child. Um, she was like three or four. She came up to me with her big sister who already had one of my scrunchies. Um, Cause I, there was like some little girls walking around with like $5 in their hand, you know, from their parents. Um, so I was offering them free scrunchies, mystery scrunchies. I had paper bags and I put them in and I, they walked past and I said, you want a free mystery scrunchie? And they're like, oh, we can pay for it. And I said, no, no, it's fine. I have lots. Right. I said, you're more than welcome to have one. So they're so excited and they took one, they, you know, they opened it and they got the same color and they, they squealed. <laughs> so that was cute. So this little girl came back to me with her big sister, uh, one of those girls I was talking about. And she, she goes, will you trade a scrunchie for an ornament? <laughs> she was so cute. Of course I was going to. Right, and I said, absolutely, do you want a mystery one or do you want to pick your color? Right, because I still had some in a bag without like a paper bag. She goes, I want a mystery one like my sister. I said, okay, cool. Right, so she took a bag, she gave me an ornament and this was it. <laughs> yeah, I guess she must have made it with like Play-Doh at another like table or a booth that was catering to kids. So that was adorable. Um, <laughs> that was probably the highlight of my day. <laughs> that was great. Um, something that really, really, really helped my sales on Saturday morning, well, all of Saturday, I guess. I had another vendor. I walked past her booth as we were setting up. Well, you know, she, we already set up, but I walked past her booth and a uh, beanie, toque, hat, whatever you want to call it, caught my eye and it had construction trucks and like dump trucks and diggers on it. And my one nephew is obsessed with diggers and dump trucks and he's at that age. He's like two and a half. Um, and he loves diggers, loves them, loves them. So I said, hey, do you have like a kid's hat in that size left? She goes, oh yeah, it's up there in the wall with the kid's hats because she had like a pegboard type thing and, or grid, grid wall, that's what they're called. And I said, okay, I'll definitely take that. So would you be interested in doing a trade? I see yours are two for 45, my cardigans um, are not that price, but similar. And uh, she goes, yeah, absolutely. And you can have like a, like a headband for yourself or a scrunchie or whatever. So we did a trade. I got a Disney hat for myself. Um, it's some for some reason I took it upstairs to the bedroom I was tired last night so I'm not gonna go get it now um and then she chose one of my um Christmas cardigans I'll put the picture here she put it on Instagram for me last night so that was really cute um so she wore that all day for me and people were like oh my god that cardigan is amazing where'd you get it and she was like down there booth 28 <laughs> right she's like I must have sent 150 people to you and I said oh I know thank you they all told me <laughs> They kept coming over and saying, oh, we've seen that girl's cardigan. It's amazing. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was really, really sweet of her. So I'm so appreciative of her. Um, her name is Carrie. I will tag her business down below if you want to go check it out. I think that would really help her out and like her algorithms and stuff. So leave her a comment somewhere on Instagram or Facebook if you don't mind. That'd be great. Um, she was a sweet person. That was really nice of her to do. She didn't have to wear it all day. I mean, probably got hot for her because it was a blanket yarn one, but 
she did it. So thank you, Carrie. I was worried going into Saturday because none of my Christmas cardigans had sold. Um, Carrie was the first one to take one, um, like for that trade. And I was like, oh no, I made all these Christmas cardigans and none of them are selling because, you know, as a crocheter or a crafter, you know that's what happens. You make these themed things and then none of them sell. And like, I get it. I mean, I wouldn't buy a Christmas cardigan from somebody either because one, I'm not a Christmas bee and two, you can't wear it all year. So I get it. But I was like, oh no, that sucks because I don't want to have it in my house all year. Um, but most of them ended up going on uh, Saturday. I think I might have one or two left, but I'm pretty sure most of them sold. And I think I had taken three kids Christmas and how many adult ones? I think I had taken six adult ones. So the Christmas, uh, the kids ones went. So the rack that I had bought that you guys seen in the first, no, second, second video of this um, playlist, I guess, on YouTube or like series. Yeah, I'm going to put it on a playlist, like holiday prep, whatever. Um, so... Remember I had bought it on Amazon because the other one I had was leaning so bad every time I used it. Even though weight was distributed evenly and the floors were even, I had to replace it because I couldn't do it without having anxiety. And it was so heavy, that other one. It was like 80 pounds. And the one I got from Amazon was like, I weighed it and it was 12.7 pounds. <laughs> so big difference. And it's so much easier to set up. My own is expandable and amazing. And if you watch that video number two of this series, you've seen that I had all my cardigans on it in my office for three days to see how it would hold up. And it held up perfectly. And it held up perfectly this weekend too. I had more cardigans on it, of course, than I did in that testing video. Loading in was a bit of a pain because as I said, I was at the very back corner. So picture the big rectangle again for me, um, like the a venue. So I was in the back corner all the way over here and the loading door like a big garage door type thing was all the way on this side so I had to walk all the way through with all of my things to set up and then I had seen my my co-worker's best friend um, was part of the event as well she's another vendor I'll tag her below um, her her business is pretty cool she does like vinyl stuff but it's it's niche and unique so I'll tag her below um, all wild co or it's all wild co I don't remember right now sorry Jade um, I had seen her and I said, Hey, how you doing? And she had already had all her stuff loaded in. And then like, I had just honestly, I said this honestly, I said, Oh man, I need to invest in one of those wagons like yours. She goes, Oh, I'm all loaded in. Do you want to use it? And I was like, would you mind? Cause that would be so freaking helpful because like I have those big dollar store bags that you've seen in previous videos. Like they're, they're massive, like just huge. And a lot of other vendors were using those too. Actually, you know what? I have one right here. They are quite huge, especially when expanded, like not expanded right now. Um, so I just honestly said it earnestly. I was like, I need to invest in one of those wagons. And she's like, oh, use mine. I'm done. And I was like, oh, thank you so, so much. So that was, I was so thankful for her. She honestly made my, she made everything so much easier for me because I was dragging them across the floor. And like, it's not hard to do. They're not super heavy, but it's heavy enough when you have to do eight trips back and forth. So I was, I was so, so thankful for that. I was like, I love you so much. And then it was funny. She was like, oh, well, when we load up tomorrow, like you're welcome to use it again. And I said, oh, thank you. I'm not going to need it though. Cause I'm going to sell everything this weekend. <laughs> and she's like, I like your attitude, you know, get a girl. Um, so I didn't need it in the end. Um, I sold quite a bit and so I didn't need it, but like I could have used it, to, you know, because you know, so many trips back and forth, it would have saved me maybe one or two trips just to load things into that wagon and then being able to like, carry one on my other arm it's fine so we all made it out it took me 45 minutes to pack up though um with my old sewing business <laughs> it was, I was just saying to steve a few minutes ago my husband i said remember my old sewing business we used to just throw everything into two suitcases and then walk out because i get home and sort the inventory because things would sell like hotcakes when i had my sewing business i used to make cloth diapers and little baby shoes and bandana bibs and you name it grow with me pants and like, there just wasn't enough time to write down all the sales, even when there was two of us selling. So I just did inventory when I got home. So my Square app actually worked perfectly. Um, and I went in with this plan. If you watched the last video in the series, number three, um, I said, I'm going to put everything in my app itemized. Um, so the itemized thing really, really helped. Um, because when I was checking people out, um, basically I had memorized what I had called everything. And I just, you know, quickly searched it in the items, added it to charge or sale or whatever it was and then charge them and they're on their way and then I could see what people had bought on my transaction record because it came up with like you know holiday cardigan number one plus size 
So that was really, really helpful. Um, there was one point where I was checking out like five people in a row. So I just quickly took a photo of the bag just in case like it didn't get it right on the app. Um, so that, that was, that was helpful. I'm glad I did that because that was a, really a saving grace for me. Okay. So the last talking point I have on this sheet is everybody's curiosity questions. And like, I was taking account of them in my head and I wrote some down like on Friday evening and then during the day on Saturday. So the question I got the most was, wow, how long does it take you to make one of these cardigans? And somebody had asked me, my coworker had asked me that on Friday or Thursday. And I was like, okay, let me break it down here because I had a minute to think about it at work. And I had said that granny square cardigans take the longest. And then granny stripe cardigans, um, or granny stitch cardigans, sorry, um, take the second longest. And then hexagon cardigans take the shortest time. And then of course kids cardigans, I can usually whip out like in an evening, depending on the yarn. Um, so I have that in my head at least already. So I was telling people that. Um, and then a lot of people were curious about like every cardigan felt different. You know, why do they feel different? And I said, well, that's blanket yarn, like polyester yarn like this, like burnout blanket. Um, the other ones are like an acrylic, uh, which have mainly used, um, uh, Bernat Super Value, Bernat Premium. Those are my favorite. Another one was, oh, what content? Do you have any wool? I like natural fibers. And I said, I'm actually allergic to wool. I cannot work with it at all or have it in my house. Um, so no. <laughs> and I had said the most like sustainable yarn that I do have is cotton and a cotton blend, but I didn't bring any of those. Um, only because like they're so lightweight and like I use a lot of Karen cotton cakes for those. Um, I'll insert a photo so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but like, I just didn't bring them because they're not going to sell in the winter. So, I mean, maybe they would have, but oh well, too late. It's fine. I didn't have enough hangers anyway. Uh, so that was all the questions I had typed out, talking points I had typed out. Um, but in my notepad, I had done all the configurations and stuff. Uh, calculations, I should, should, should say. See what I mean about my brain? I took a power nap this afternoon because it was a lot easier to do these events when I was in my early 20s than it is to do at the age of 34. I am so sore today and like we had chairs we could sit on and stuff but I'm up and down talking to people and I'm just so sore all over. Okay, so I have calculations. The good part that everybody wants on YouTube. Okay, so on Friday I sold seven cardigans and one 13 square granny bag that you've seen earlier. And then on Saturday, drum roll please, I sold 25 cardigans. Whoop whoop. Raise the roof. Raise the roof. So 32 cardigans in total, uh, plus one 13 square granny bag. So that was pretty awesome. I was very excited about that. I can't remember. Oh, I took. Let's say I can't remember if I wrote down how many I took there. Um, but I went through my square app, and there was a few I forgot to add. I was checking people out. I'm like, where is this one? I guess I never added it. And it was mainly the kids ones um, that I forgot to add. So I did end up taking 55-ish cardigans and I sold 32. So that's about 23 left over for my next events. Um, this week I might make a few, I mean, I'll try to make some uh, Christmas cardigans um, because my next event is this coming Friday. So I got five days basically. I took a half day on Friday again. And yeah, so we'll see if I get any done. If I don't, I don't. I'm not gonna rush myself and stress myself out this week. That's a promise to myself I've already made. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna crochet at my regular pace. If I get it done, I get it done. If I don't, I still have two more like uh, uh, Christmas themed ones to take this Friday. It'd be nice if I could sell out this Friday and then I could just cancel the event on December 7th. <laughs> as much as I want to go. I don't like doing markets, you know, they're just exhausting. But mm, I do enjoy the social part of it, but still exhausting. And like, this was the only two day one I had. Uh, the, all the others are like one evening or one day. And they're shorter events, they're not nine to five. So whatever. Okay, so let's talk about my expenses before I talk about the final numbers of Moolah. Okay, so the first um, purchase slash trade that I had made was a lady right across from me. And she, her booth was pretty cool. Um, so it was her and her mom selling these things. And they are these cool pens. So you could um, make your own like pen. They also had crochet hooks, keychains. Um, I just went with pens because I, I love my prim ergonomic crochet hooks and I didn't need another crochet hook. So, yeah, these pens. Um, I'll show you all the ones that I got. Um, I did take the Christmas gift ones upstairs already, so I'm not going to show you those. 
the Christmas gifts ones I got, and I can talk about here because nobody in my, <laughs> in my personal life knows about my YouTube channel. Um, so my stepdad, I got him a Toronto Maple Leafs um, pen because he's an idiot and he cheers for the Leafs. Um, and then my sister got a tooth charm because she's a dental hygienist. And then for one of my uncles, I got, because I forgot to get him a stocking stuffer. I got everybody else one, but I forgot about him somehow. Um, it says, I'd rather be outdoors or something like that. And he loves hiking. So it was perfect for him. Um, so I traded her the two children's cardigans. And then I had got um, two more pens, I think, or one more. I don't know. They're $10 each. So I said, I want more <laughs> because they're so cool. So that purple one you just seen. And then basically the exact same one, but in pink. I said, I love sparkle. I would love for you to put a whole bunch of like the sparkly ones on there for me. This one is crochet all day. She said she also crochets, so she had to get these for her business, which was pretty cool. And then I got Pookie Bear, which is Garfield's teddy bear. And she put a little fuzzy charm on it for me. I originally was gonna give this to my sister because I actually call my sister Pookie. Um, but I'm gonna keep it now because she also had Odie, which is just so awesome. My uh, husband was like, are you going to give that to your aunt? Because as kids, we used to call my aunt Lori Odie. Um, my sister started that when she was a baby and it's kind, of, it's kind of stuck. I mean, I say Lori more so now, but she always calls herself Odie around us. And then, of course, they had my favorite guy in Garfield. Um, Steve and I's favorite Christmas uh, thing to watch is the Garfield Christmas special. And we watch it endlessly at Christmas season, so... If you ask us what our favorite Christmas special is, it's Garfield. Garfield Family Christmas. And there's a really catchy song on it that plays in her head all year. <laughs> so that was the first trade I had made. Um, and then uh, the lady that had traded me the cardigan for the two toques and scrunchie and a headband. Um, I don't have any photos of that. I don't have them with me, sorry. You're going to have to trust me on that. They're cute. <laughs> um, then I also got a really pretty wreath um, for my niece. So it's like a white fuzzy wreath and like a little girl sitting in it and then it had like a little wooden sign that said believe. And then the little girl sitting in it looks so much like my niece to me. <laughs> just because like she had like golden sparkly red hair, like little tinsel hair and she just dressed so cute. And like this lady had also bought a cardigan from me. She was my next door booth neighbor. And so I always feel guilty not buying something back. Um, but this one was staring at me all day and I kept thinking of my niece when I seen it. So. Maybe your dad will help her hang it in her room, or I don't know where she'll put it. I don't know if they'll keep it, but it was cute, and I had to have it for her. So I bought her that. It was $30. I don't need any more Christmas gifts for her, but I can't help it sometimes with the little kids. So, oh well, what can you do? <laughs> I also bought a um, pack of shortbread cookies. I think it was 15 of them for $20. So that kind of sucked, but they were worth it, <laughs> so it's fine. Um, food at the event. Um, they had a caterer come in called Scott's Rollin' Roasters. Um, I asked them where they're from. They said of Dublin, Ontario. And what they were doing was really cool. So they had, um, like it was called like Christmas in a cup and then like, you know, soups and stuff. Um, so it wasn't really a cup. It was more of like one of those shallow takeout paper bowls. And it was a turkey dinner in a bowl and it was so good. I had um, three over the, no, sorry, two over the weekend. Um, so it was, um, turkey on the bottom, dressing, and then an uh, ice cream scoop type thing of mashed potatoes, and they drizzled, like, uh, gravy all over it, and oh my goodness, was it delicious. I looked so forward to that on, on Saturday, because I had it Friday night, and then, like, I definitely wanted it again on Saturday, and then he had some leftover at the end of the event, I heard, and he was offering them, like, out to vendors and stuff for, like, a really good discount, like, pay only, like, two dollars type thing, but it was so busy at the end of the event for me, I couldn't get over there. And of course, being in the back corner, his booth, like my booth was here and he was all the way over at the loading doors. So every time I wanted to get food or anything, I had to walk all the way across through the crowd. So I think over the event, I only got to him twice, but that's okay. The end of yesterday at 5 p.m. I was starving and I had pizza here at home that I wanted to eat, but I was like, I can't make it home. <laughs> I was like, I'm oh, so hungry. So I just got like a cheeseburger or something from McDonald's and then I had a little bit of pizza when I got home. Um, I think at home until I think 6.30ish because I went to Michael's afterwards and I spent $15. I got some little like charms I can put on like a chain because I like to buy their chains and just make myself a little necklace. And I had a coupon so I wanted to use it. <laughs> and then I also got some sticker sheets for Christmas like to and from because I ran it last year. And then at the event I also bought a soft pretzel. Um, I was surprised that they were doing pretzels um, where they 
works. They were in the middle. They weren't at a food booth or anything. Um, but they had like a toaster oven and like they had already like made the pretzels, of course. And then they were putting the toppings on them as people were ordering them. So I had a cinnamon sugar pretzel. It was really good. So that was $9. Um, it was $6, but I tipped them $3. And then um, I also got McDonald's in the morning on, yeah, Friday morning. No, sorry, Saturday morning. And yeah, so I think at McDonald's I had spent, last night I spent like $8. Because I got like a little meal. And then $14 in the morning. So you do the math. My brain's too tired right now. <laughs> okay, and then... Let's talk about my sales numbers and stuff. Okay, so as I said, I sold 32 cardigans. Um, my sales, like my sales total, like according to Square, was about 1,400. It was 14, $1,420. So it's pretty good. My expenses are 156. So the booth fee was $375, which I'm not super pleased about, but it was worth it. And I knew it would be worth it because of volunteering previous years. If I had never gone into this market before, I would have looked for reviews and applied for next year. But since I know the event is really good, I was like, okay, I'm gonna pay that amount. And they allowed you to do it in two payments. So that was really nice because I work full time. I don't do this as like a full time gig. So I was able to split it between paychecks. So that was nice. Um, so my profit in the end was about $900. So that was pretty good. Um, that's not including the cost of yarn. Um, and stuff, but because of my workplace, I get a really good discount, and uh, so uh, it was 13 hours in total, and averaged about uh, $70 an hour <laughs> in sales, so it was pretty good. Um, something I did forget to put into my expenses was the cost of fuel, and I had put fuel in my car, I think $50 um, on Thursday evening, yeah, Thursday evening, because I knew it was going to use a lot of gas um, over the past two days. So in two days, I had used 275 kilometers in my car because I had the drop Larry off Friday morning at doggy daycare, go to work. So that's 40 minutes, well, half an hour down to the doggy daycare, about 40-ish minutes back to work. And then I had to leave work around like 1230, get down to Stratford, which is about 45 minutes from my workplace, um, you know, do the event, come home Friday evening, go back Saturday morning, come back Friday evening. So 275 kilometers later, um, and my car has this cool feature, feature. that says, since uh, you've refueled, uh, since refueling, this is how many kilometers you've used. So I knew on Thursday night, I wanted to set it to that menu thing and see how many kilometers I was gonna use over the weekend. I still had to go pick up Larry from daycare in a few hours, so that'll add to it. But it's cool to have that feature because it calculates it for me instead of me doing the math myself. <laughs> This morning, I woke up to like 20 messages from friends and family being like, how'd it go? How'd it go? It looked like you were doing pretty good. So I just posted like a really quick story on my stories for Facebook and Instagram saying like, hey, thanks for checking in. I appreciate you all. I'm going to refer everybody to my stories today because I can't type this out 20 freaking times. Um, so yeah, it was cool. Um, it was nice that everybody was thinking of me. I sold a few um, to like friends. Um, my two aunts came to see me. So that was really nice of them. Um, they didn't buy anything, but I told my one aunt I'm going to make her one for Christmas because there's one she really loved. Um, but it just didn't fit over her, her cans. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to make her one for Christmas. I told her that. I already have a gift for my other aunt. Um, so I do have to make two more because I can't make them for two of them and not for one of them. The things that I do for love, but that's okay. My other aunt is going to be really easy to please because she has the same taste as me. Wild, crazy, colorful. So She'll be easy to please, and I know exactly what I'm going to make her already. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember that you were strong, you were beautiful, you were loved, and the world appreciates having you here.